Radiant team ban. Dire team ban. Radiant Invoker. team pick. Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome back to the ESL1 Frankfurt qualifiers for the North American region. We're going to be taking a look at a battle between North and South T-Show facing off against Digital Chaos in what should be an absolutely fabulous game number two. There was a lot that happened in the last game. A lot of it ended up being somewhat repetitive because I feel like T-Show just kind of ended up putting themselves in a bit of a hole with how their early game went. Um, again, Lyrical Dota joined by the Wonder Cow. Sir, what was your impression of the last game? If you could sum it up for us. Textbook. Textbook okay. from Digital Chaos. And and T-Show, the way that they drafted, they should have known that that was coming, but there weren't a lot of good options for them to deal with it other than just outperform in the lane. They, uh, they didn't. So <laughs> it kind of spiraled out of control from there. And T-Show <laughs> are going to give up the Invoker again, and uh, they're going to try a different strategy this time. Also, getting rid of the Nature's Prophet and the Beastmaster. So clearly mm -hmm. pushing is on their mind. They do not want to be split pushed down again. Yeah, that was a real pain. Uh, they did end up giving over the Invoker again, which is something that I think is maybe a little bit questionable. They played a pretty good game out of it. I do think that uh, in the offlane there, Moo did a whole heck of a lot on that Nature's Prophet. It was really freaking yeah. strong. Um, but this time instead, we're going to be seeing them go for a little bit more of like the team fighty lockdown type of heroes. You've got Doom, who's going to be able to run at that mid hero throughout the early stages of this game and then eventually drop on down that ultimate. Um, Darkseer as well, but the immediate answer with the Oracle, that's got to hurt. Playing up against uh, an Oracle with the Darkseer, just everything gets purged off. Yeah, it's a pain, but to be fair, Oracle is really impactful if you have a very strong Oracle team. Not necessarily a very strong individual Oracle player, because he does require a lot of communication and a very strong sense of positioning. Oracle is one of the least successful heroes this patch in professional Dota. Uh, across the patch for just about every team, despite the fact that he has been relatively popular in the second part of the patch. So just because the Oracle comes out and is able to do quite a bit of purging uh, uh, does not necessarily mean it will be used to an optimal efficiency. Yeah, most definitely. And, you know, you want to be able to see those sort of big plays in the laning stage where you're able to get off a, a fortune's end, but it doesn't always end up working. Maybe Darkseer is able to get away further enough before you're able to release the channel things. Like, those are the types of, of things that you need to be a little bit careful about. And I, I really want to see who they pair up in that lane as well, because one of the other things to keep in mind is that you have the capabilities with the Invoker now of after you end up, you know, going for that purge, then Darkseer is going to be walking that constant speed. You're going to be able to lay down a Sunstrike, and maybe you end up finding the kill. So I, I, I do worry a lot about Darkseer in the laning stage, but I think you're right that if you play it well enough, maybe you end up being able to get out of this lane with a decent amount here. Yeah, uh, of course, the other heroes in the draft will make a difference. Ten if there is remaining. more from Digital Chaos in, in terms of lane control, especially Five hard stuns, remaining. maybe a hard stun carry such as Ben or a uh, Chaos Knight coming out Reserve and then time. an additional hard stun or reliable disable support to come out in a tri lane. So you could be in a lot of trouble. Uh, alternatively, a ranged carry that doesn't have to be within Ion Shell uh, area uh, won't be able to be zoned by Darkseer. There mm. are a lot of responses to this Darkseer available in the pool. Absolutely. Well, for now, at least we're going to be seeing the Spectre band out. Um, I think that that's one of those heroes that if you're able to just sort of pick it up with anybody that has that like strong single target lockdown, pretty much somebody's going to die in the game. Like you get a doom into a haunt and then whoever it is is really not going to stand a whole heck of a lot of a chance. So I, I, I like that. Um, the OD was also taken out a little bit earlier. We've got the Enchantress, no Bambi this time around. Um, is there any hero that you feel like, I, I guess neither side has really shown their, their cards as to what they're going to end up running as a general strategy. Is there something that you feel like you would like to see out of T-Show, given how bad the game ended up going last time? Um, maybe shoring up their lanes a little bit, or maybe trying to go for like an early pushing lineup or something like that? You know, what it comes down to is that they need to be drafting what they're comfortable playing. And, and remember, they have had three player changes over the last, I think, month or two. So... They are still Dyer figuring team. it out, and they by no means were a power player in this region prior to those changes, right? Mm -hmm. I, I mean, they're good players, not to take anything away from them, but 
We've not seen them at a, at a significant land. We don't see them coming up into semifinals or finals, even in regional contests like the BTS Americas. So this is a squad that needs to play more to their own strengths than trying to counter opponents, I think, Ten right? Six. They need to make sure that they know what they're doing and, and they got to stay out of their own heads to a certain degree. Yeah. It's really easy well, to theory craft yourself into a hole. Definitely. And like, just look at a hero and then try and counter it without necessarily thinking about the general scheme of how you want the game to go. Um, I, I, I'm very curious what they end up bringing out here. With the Enigma pick, it does feel like DC are maybe playing things a little bit on the greedier side, although it's yeah. not easy to sort of punish an enigma nowadays i feel like you I, I always feel like the the classic answer was the bounty hunter but now you're in a situation where you're going to be able to like you know potentially kill off a bounty hunter if he shows and starts trying to steal your creeps with an enigma if you do have like just a sentry word on you or a, a dust like things could go awry very quickly uh, the, the bounty hunter is the seventh hero most successful hero Radiant this team. uh this patch so far if you count Success as whether or not a team wins against more successful teams or loses against Bounty Hunter's actually been really good this patch. Mm -hmm. He has been much less picked um, this patch than in prior patches, but since the Shanghai Major, his pick rate's gone up uh, over the average about 9%, and his ban rate's gone up over 30%. Yeah. So, you know, it's a hero that's becoming back Ten into the consciousness remaining. right now, and, and I, pe players at high-level pubs are very aware of this Five because he is remaining. one of the most popular heroes. I think he's third most popular hero in 5K and above pubs right now. So uh, yeah. certainly a hero that we could see come out in response to the Enigma, but even without well, him... He has been banned out, but I was saying like oh. that there's nobody else that even really fits with trying to deny out like the jungle. That that's sort of the predominant one to be able to work, and even him, I don't feel like it works very well. Is there anything else that potentially could like work, or do you just try and run sort of a maybe aggressive dual lane with the dark seer and then rotate into the jungle? Could run an aggressive Thanks. dual lane. I don't necessarily think that they need to. They do have a lot the of answers to the enigma, right? I mean, they have. Yeah. They have two ways to cancel from their support. They have a vacuum to cancel that does have a mini stun from the Darkseer. They've got Doom has not only Doom, but also Infernal Blade. So if you don't catch, literally, if you don't catch every single hero as the Enigma, you probably get your Black Hole canceled. Um, but that's a high bar to set. So his laning phase, now that remaining. I see the Bounty Hunter was the first ban of the game. <laughs> um, you know, his, his laning time. stage should be more or less all right. Uh, uh, you don't usually see supports abandoned lanes in order to try and hunt down a jungler mm -hmm. uh, too extensively because while you're doing that you're not getting any experience getting any gold Radiant and unlike back. rotating onto a laning hero where you know for sure where the laning hero is you don't know where an enigma is he could be anywhere because you can't yeah, absolutely. It's definitely one of those issues, and uh, actually finding him now, especially with the added camps and everything else that comes along with that, it's just it's a real hassle. We do see the Tide Hunter band out. Uh, we're not going to be seeing that sort of double bubble strategy at least at this point in time. They could go back for a Faceless Void or something crazy like that if they really want to double down on it. Uh, they do have a lot of damage that's coming out from the Clinks as well, and you know, with Soxa taking that Enigma, it feels like there's going to be a lot of potential for already some good team fight coming out, and they're going to have to ban out the dp another sort of high tier mid player or mid hero could we end up seeing do you think this could be a zeus game potentially or is that too dangerous with the clinks be a zeus game in that zeus is going to provide some vision advantage he should lane just fine into the invoker but the, like you said the problem uh therein is the clinks the the vision advantage that that would provide on the map would also help open up space for gyrocopter when he hits his first doldrum gyrocopter mm. one of these heroes that peaks really fast and then levels off for like 10 minutes and then hits another peak and levels Five off. Not a lot of heroes remaining. have that um, ebbing and flowing efficacy in a game. Usually it's Reserve. some some variation of a linear efficacy. Gyrocopter mm -hmm. is, is an interesting hero to try and open up space for. The windowing. That's a hell of a word right there you got, by the way. I just, I'm in love with it. Wait, wait which word? I said a lot of words just e now. Efficacy? Oh, I, I, efficacy, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm illiterate, I think, so it's it's good to hear stuff that's that's... The tie level. Um, anyways, <laughs> Pac is gonna come out. <laughs> just to just smooth right on Pius if that's that one. They're gonna go for the puck, and they do go back for the faceless void. Interesting. Puck is a hero who also has been growing in popularity a little bit over the average since the Shanghai Major, but uh, Puck is literally the least effective hero this patch. Only a handful of players are reliably winning with Puck, 
and most of the time when puck is chosen ranking for the team goes down on average mm. um t show are already playing into a squad that just has experience as players and and really just kind of railroaded them last game i'm i'm a little worried about the puck pick because it is a difficult <sighs> hero to execute as a team yeah well, the other thing to keep in mind here, though, is that you, you mentioned it earlier. If this is a, a comfort hero for them, if this sure. is a hero that they feel like they, they are going to be able to make moves across the map on, then you got to take it. You, you really do, even if it's not necessarily the best option. So I am very excited to see what the Sooths here is going to be able to bring to the table. I want to see if t show are going to be able to fight their way back on into this game or if DC are going to be able to pull away with a clean 2-0 sweep. Can do a quick little introduction for these fine folks here. Soxa is going to be on that Enigma. It's going to be Mu playing the Faceless Void. Resolution is going to be playing the Invoker. Weeha on that Clinks, uh, And then last but not least, out here to the side, Misery on the Oracle. And you can right. introduce those fine folks on the northeast side of the map. Absolutely. Here on the dire side for Tisha, we've got C4T walking on coals with the Doom Bringer. Tavo is going to be going faster on the darks here. Suze is the Fairy Dragon. Puck himself, Bardo is going to be bringing nightmares on the bane and carlin is taking gyrocopter for a spin oh wonderful look at that set by the way he's got like oh. a, a cross right there or something the the jesus gyrocopter is going to be moving along the top lane and, and running into moo although i think that they're going to end up backing out yeah it's fine for the moment but pretty unique set um I, i've never I, seen that set i feel like he's about to take us to never never land <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, Michael Jackson's domain. So <laughs> is there any team in particular that you favor going into this one as far as ease of execution go, as far as sort of uh, the team fight potential and just generally who do you think is going to win the game here? I think the draft synergy from T-Show on paper is much better. But I think for Digital Chaos, they've demonstrated that they're just as a team more cohesive, better communication. So I, I would lean toward Digital Chaos in terms begins. of my overall belief, but in terms of draft, I, I do think t show has that synergy. Mm -hmm. Well, and Gyrocopter and Puck both picking up the uh, the bounty rune, so a pretty nice little start there for T-Show. They're going to be able to uh, put themselves in a pretty nice start to this game. Um, as far as the mid matchup goes, is there a particular side that you favor? Do you think it's going to come down to the rotations? Uh, what are your thoughts there? So, uh, Puck tends to like to play into heroes that don't run bottles because he controls the rune much more easily, and he is a, a spammer. Puck is one of the heroes that, in terms of lane control, actually does just a little bit better than Invoker. He's a little bit less likely to die, and he, hmm. on average, gets one or two more creeps by that 10-minute mark, even lane. But one thing I will say is, on rotations, Puck is much harder to kill with a rotation, whereas Invoker tends to be an easier... Mm -hmm, absolutely. And I think that that's something that we're going to need to keep in mind with this Doom here. Although he is already going to start this off. Wow. Oh my god, this might end up being a quick early kill. Can they find it? Need one more hit. Oh. But they're not going to be able to hit some strength from afar. Invoker takes first blood. Resolution doing things big right at the start. It's that level of communication we were talking about. Resolution walking in and, and ready not only with that map awareness, but Misery just absolutely aware of what a Doombringer is going to fall back and do here uh, for the first couple of levels. Really just willing to go out and get it done. You don't see that very often, the single support aggressive rotation onto the offlane camp because there's... Well, and you, you recognize it's it's partially also because, like, Darkseer is over here in the jungle. They realize that Doom's going to be over there as well. It's it's pretty hard, I think, to stand up to this lineup. By the way, Resolution falling a little bit low here. He's going to be battling slightly. Can he actually hit another Sunstrike? That'd be pretty big, but he's going to end up solving up. So no chance for it. Um, pretty even start to this game. Moo's going to heal back up as well. And after that first kill, things looks like things are going to slow down a little bit. Yeah, I, it also, that first kill did come down a little bit of misfortune for c 40 because he was not able to get a creep with an armor aura mm -hmm. that you know uh camp if he was able to get like a wild wing ripper or something the right clicks from oracle would not have done nearly as much damage he probably would have been oh. just one of those little things that ends up making a big difference for us of the lane base well, and again, over here, Tavo doing his best on the darks here. You're going to have the rotation that comes in now as Soxa is going to be trying to zone out C4T. They're going to trade hits in the middle lane as well, and everybody's kind of living on the edge at this point. Um, yeah. Is pushing themselves to the very limit. Tavo's actually going to have to run away. Is he going to die to this? Oh, this is dangerous. Do not end up accidentally killing yourself. Yeah, <laughs> oh, <God>. well, <laughs> fastest way back to the fountain, right? I guess. Uh, yeah. 
He didn't buy out before he died, so he did lose half of that creep's value just just from that moment. Yeah, he that hurts. Got in it before he died. Uh, probably not worth it in that case. But uh, I, I just want to point out something that Sasuke was doing over on this hill when the Doom rotated in with double damage. He hmm. had uh, two of his Eidolons up on the high ground to provide Ooh. vision. So the Doom was waiting on the high ground and Enigma could see it the whole time. Just really nice micro. So once again, one of those little things that you, you kind of revel in when you see players doing it. Oh, Seuss almost getting killed off there by the Sunstrike. But with the bottle bringing, uh, coming out to him, he is going to be able to heal a little bit more. and. That was Resolution's potential option to, to kill him, and didn't end up quite working out, unfortunately. Um, so this is where things get a little bit more scary, I feel like, almost, uh, in the mid lane, yeah. is Rezo. Yeah, no, I, I'd agree with that. This is the stage where Puck is going to be doing the best into an Invoker, and as Invoker gets up a couple of his quas for the regen sustain, and some more damage from Exhort, he will start to catch up a little bit. But look at where Stu's is. He doesn't have yeah. an orb for jaunting away either anymore, and uh, Oracle's coming in. <laughs> yeah, they've got heroes that are rotating in. You mentioned it. He's not got it for another three seconds about. Can they find it? They end up being able to get that off, and he is going to try and run away there. Does manage to find his way out. And he's playing so freaking aggressively, and there's just not a great way to punish that right now, I guess. Yeah. Well, it's, it's that stage in the game where nobody really here has the lockdown or damage to do it. And Sunstrike, there was no uh, mana for it for the Invoker. So, uh, had he had mana, that may have been a kill. It would have been enough if it landed. But uh, Sue's being a pain in the butt, really. <laughs> yeah. A little bit. He is, uh, he is definitely messing around. Oh, a nice little orb dodge there. They're at the turnaround here. He's actually using his orb offensively, and it's going to end up being able to go down. They find the Sunstrike Resolution, dropping a little bit low. They do have the Surge now. C4T is going to try and right-click Rezo, but not going to be able to find the kill. Unfortunate. Uh, the rotation in from the Enigma with that level 6 dissuaded them from going any further. So they find one and don't end up losing their mid. A pretty nice little trade there for DC. Yeah, DC are happy as long as this laning stage basically breaks even. They can get up a good time on the Midas for Invoker, who is once again going Exhort and Quaff. Uh, the Faceless Void needs some basic items to be effective as well. Uh, and Clinks, of course, is basically free farming. So the laning phase breaking down pretty heavily in their favor, I would say, all things considered. But the Gyrocopter is getting a decent amount of farm, so that's at least a consolation prize here for T. Yeah, that's true. He's been able to get himself a nice little bit. I mean, the top of the last hits right now is going to be that Enigma who's been able to have the jungle completely and totally to himself. And currently the fifth highest, uh, rather sixth highest in terms of the net worth. He's trading off with the, the Darkseer. I'm actually really surprised how well Darkseer has been able to do in the jungle, despite the fact that it's going up against the Enigma, essentially. Uh, and he did die that one time. So he's, he's been able to have an okay time. Meanwhile, in the mid lane, they have been able to drop the black hole. Resolution's trying to stay alive. He does end up going down to the puck. And, and I think that that was maybe either the coil snap or potentially just the creeps right clicking him. In the meantime, can they kill off this doom? They need to find a little bit more, but it's not enough damage. So they trade one for one in the mid, and it looks like Oracle barely able to walk away with his own life. Uh, Oracle threw down that purifying flames just literally a half a second too early oh. to make that kill happen. Moo, top lane. That's going to end up... Whoa. Oh. <laughs> Quick fingers. Nicely done. Wait by Moo. Hey, the Void is a difficult hero to... Lock down and grab kills here without actually having some sort of a, a long term hold like the Fiend script. Fiend's still only level 4. I'm not sure that. Who is actually staying pretty far forward, but in general, if he plays decently safe, they don't have a lot of kill potential on him. Yeah. Well, and, and you know, that goes to show, like, I, I totally thought that that was just going to end up being a kill, but able to jump to the other side. I, I kind of wonder if Carlin had dropped the, you know, the, the call down a little bit further forward and had this rocket barrage going. Maybe they would have been able to find it, but it is a really hard kill to find regardless on that faceless void. As far as the net worth story goes, so far you've got three of the top four that are on the side of DC with Invoker, Enigma, and Clinks all up there, and now Gyrocopter and Puck catching back up as well. It does look like they want to make a rotation with this faceless void chronosphere though and if they're able to find tooths here in the mid lane this would be a pretty big kill do they have the lockdown to make this kill happen though it's a problem they have a chronosphere so yeah. if they have the damage through the duration of chronosphere but Ooh. puck is gone he's under his own <laughs> smoke he's taking his bat and ball and going home or i guess more appropriately into your home getting ready to use that bat and ball to break your knees because clinks could be in trouble here uh, do they have any dust, though? That's the question. They actually do on the bane. Do on the bane. He's going to run away, but they don't find him. He runs off the other direction, and 
A little bit of a duck and dive and dodge in mid lane. They're going to end up diving for this one as they are going to be able to catch the Doom. Sunstrike is there, but is it enough damage? It doesn't quite look like it is. Misery is going to start to get chased down as well. He does have the heal there as they are going to be able to jump forward. Dream Coil only on to Moo. On the other side, Misery is still alive. They have almost been able to kill off the Buck as he does go down, and it looks like that's going to be the sole casualty from the Radiant. And they might even be able to take a Tier 1 tower off of this if they want. Yeah, uh, Puck went in a little too aggressively on that, I think. While, while his opponents were between the Tier 1 and Tier 2, they had every little bit of advantage that they wanted, especially with the Chronosphere down, but as soon as they started to get away, Puck probably could have seen their damage just isn't really there. With the Gyrocopter not quite farmed yet, he's only sitting on top of base boots. So it's not like Gyrocopter can go barreling into these fights yet. He has no survivability at all. No. Yeah. No, it's definitely true, and and I guess for that, would you think that he needs to go for like one of those early Sanjin Yashas? Do you try to go for Helm of the Dominator here to build up a little bit of a net worth advantage? Do you think that they can even sort of wait that long? Do they need something to come online right now? Helm of the Dominator is a safe oh. enough play here. Oh. We might actually have a kill real quickly. Uh, Trying to turn around, kill off Tavo. Nice stomp to be able to cancel that out, and they find we regardless. Oh, Sunstrike? Ooh. Arrow, narrow, narrow escape. Uh, in the mid lane, they might be looking on going on Suze, and they are. Uh, Cold Snap? He used that as well now, his phase shift. There we go. Now, they had Black Cold, oh, man. but he actually doesn't end up sticking around. He sticks around a little bit longer, and I don't think he's going to get this denied. This is a pretty easy tower. Yeah, he stuck around to keep those creeps off the tower. Um, it barely delayed anything. Uh, so what I was going to say is the Helm of the Dominator would be a relatively safe call here because there is nobody on the Radiant side that knocks down Ancient Sacks really effectively, right? So you don't have to worry about one hero coming up and stealing your stacks uh, as opposed to um, many other situations. So that strategy. Mm -hmm. uh, as long as they've got vision in the general area and are checking on it, fairly frequently to make sure the whole team doesn't come over to steal stacks, Helm of the Dominator would give Gyro the fastest launching point. Uh, it, it is more common these days than it used to be to run that Sanjin Yasha. Oh boy, speaking of oh, the Gyro he's done. God. Uh, that hurts. That really hurts. That That's not a kill that needed to not happen for T-Show. Um, a quick and easy pick right there for Weeha and I don't know, this is, if, if you find pickoffs like that in your jungle, it just can't happen, I feel like, if they want to be able to win this game. They are going to chase now after Misery, and with the Dream Coil committed, they do find that kill, but that is so much for that one. And now they're going to end up turning this back around. Doom has been dropped onto Enigma. Going to chase here a little bit further forward. They do have the Chronos here. Going to catch onto two. Oh, no, this is going to be a problem. Sunstrike is going to go onto Tavo, and now can they find anything else? There's going to be the Fiend Grip onto Wii, trying to bring him down pretty low. They do have a lot of damage that's coming out. The Silence as well, and they find the kill with the Brain Staff coming out from Bardo. The Puck got the last hit, but still they kept alive. Well, I guess that's not really worth it. They only got one for that, and the Chronosphere was dropped. Oh, yeah, that was great for Tisha. It wasn't very uh, smoothly executed, but the end result was fantastic for them. The only mm -hmm. hero that lost gold on their team was the Darkseer, and all things considered, they swung about 1,100 in their favor, which at 11 minutes is, is a pretty decent swing. Absolutely. It looks like Gyrocopter is actually going to be going back for drums at this point, or at least the casual bracer is feeling yeah. like he needs to be a little bit more potent right now. Well, he did go for the Aquila, so hitting the Aquila, and that Aquila actually came out a little bit late, later than you would expect anyway. All right, so mm -hmm. um, running into Aquila drums build implies that they are going to try and group up and do a lot of team fighting. That makes a decent amount of sense considering how much AoE they have. They've got Vacuum Wall into Dream Coil into Call Down with the splash damage from the Flak Cannon. They've got Orb, uh, Illusory Orb. They have waning rift, right? They <laughs> they do pretty well when opponents are grouped up and, and ready to be knocked over. That being said, as we are going to see the top tower, or rather bottom tower already go down and the top tower as well, uh, you don't actually have any points right now for Enigma in the vacuum. You just got the first one right uh, right here, so it might end up being a little bit of an issue. Enigma actually ends up being able oh, to get the wow. tower destroyed, and now you catch two as well. Oh, they've already got him with the black hole, and if they need to, they can even drop a little bit more onto him. That's too dead. Oh, that was not the TP. You cannot be letting that happen. If you are going to TP that far forward, your allies cannot be standing in the event horizon of a black hole. 
from from that enigma. Like there's no excuse. There's no blink coming in there. Enigma was literally just standing there in advance. T shows. That, that's one of those things that I was talking about to start the game where T shows communication does not always seem to be really on par or, or oh. up to the uh, bar that we are setting. I casually walk into resolution, and that's going to be a pretty nice kill for them. Doom was the one that ended up picking it up, and uh, pretty well worth it. I think that was something that was definitely needed for their team. And you look at it, it's going to end up being actually about a 1,600 gold swing just off of that one kill. And now you take a look at the difference in terms of team net worth over the past couple of minutes. It's definitely been in the favor of DC, but that one helps sort of stem the flow of the, the blood going back the other direction. So yeah, pretty well played. It's all about damage mitigation for Tisha right now, right? You get what you can get. It's going to be worth more because of the 682 comeback mechanics that are still to some degree in place. Um, kills are worth quite a bit at this stage in the game, especially when you are pretty far behind and you are towers behind. That's the biggest factor for this stage in the game for that AoE comeback gold is are the kills that you're getting being influenced by a tower gold differential and not just a kill gold differential. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's something that right now you've still got towers taken, but uh, not all of the tier twos yet. Yeah. I, I think some of this you could say is probably a lot of it, I guess, would be the, the tower gold uh, that has led them to this type of advantage. Yeah. Um, but they've also just been farming really effectively. Like You look at the CS right here, and Enigma up at the top, uh, as well as the Clinks by a significant margin. Now Invoker too, all three of them, they've just been farming really efficiently and using the map well, I feel like. Yeah, no, they, they have been doing a good job of maximizing their input or their uh, economic gain based on the amount of control that they've been able to take, right? They're not sitting on their laurels and hanging out on their own side of the map after taking Tier 1s. They're annexing territory, and that's really what DC did last game as well that led to such a decisive victory. Mm. And it, it, it breathes confidence Radiant to me, is really how it, it feels like. Not only have we been able to take objectives, but we're confident that we'll react in time. If one of our allies gets uh, picked on, we'll be able to make sure that we get everything work. Oh, well, they've already committed the Dream Coil here. They don't have Black Hole for this. This could actually be really bad. They dropped the Chronosphere, but there's still a lot of damage on the other side. Invoker already killed off the Puck, though, and now turning back around, they are going to lose the Enigma at the end of the day, and I think that Moo might go down as well as he is going to end up getting Fiend's Grip. So a nice combo there as they rotated in several heroes, and unfortunately, the rest of the damage, the rest of the control was not quite enough to be able to turn that one around for DC. Do they find Weeha? It doesn't look like it for the moment. They've actually dropped down a Nightmare on the other side. Are going to be able to jump onto Resolution, but the turnaround is right there as well as the Strike. Backing back onto two, they've been able to get off the False Promise though and keeping Rezo alive. This could be really bad for Tisho. The Disarm is there as well. Do they have enough damage? They end up losing Rezo. One last shot there from Weeha ends up finishing off the Doom, and it looks like Misery might go down as well. So four already. One more to follow as he ends up getting parked in this way by a creep, and that's going to be a full team wipe really well played by t-show yeah that's exactly what t-show wants right they do have to worry about a little bit of aoe synergy coming out of dc but there's a lot more aoe synergy coming out of t-show whenever they can take those like four or five on five fights they should come out ahead even with a decent gold disadvantage which is now shifted it's cut by half basically after that fight so they're pretty much back in this game on that one maybe positional disadvantage from dc God, that was that was really good. I, I I feel like that's sort of the the impetus here for them to be able to make something else happen. And at 16 minutes into the game, if you've been able to bring the net worth lead down, and you know go to about 3,000 or so roughly with difference in earned experience at about 2,500, this is a pretty great spot for them. I, I feel like they're at least now in a, a capability to to take this type of fight, and they're gonna at least. I guess this is just a nightmare to be petty for the uh, the bane as he walks away. <laughs> Yeah, did he, he TP'd out of there, right? So yeah, he did. Nightmare to make sure that he doesn't get uh, hit with a time lock. Yeah. Uh, that that safety valve nightmare, I guess. It's definitely. Mu is uh, pretty far forward here, though. I guess he feels safe because everything was used in that last fight, but Doom's ult is up in four seconds, and no way for, for Mu to be confident that he's not being He is going to TP out. Yeah. Well, now they're all going to back out. Do you think that they need to start thinking about Roshan at this point with the Desolator finished? It's like they might be thinking about it now. Do they have a smoke? They do have a smoke. They're going to smoke, try to grab a pick off, and then probably collapse into the... Hmm. They might just... This is really risky. 
They do not have the AoE to control this if it turns into a choke point fight, and it's going to the counter smoke coming out here. Uh, they, know. they have a black hole, they get the silence off though, and this could be a big issue. They have jumped forward, they drop down the Chronosphere, but it's only on the Tavo. Is that going to end up being enough? Darkseer dropping low, he does die before the Chronosphere comes off. They get the stun as well on the crit. He's not going to end up getting off his Doom, and suddenly everybody from T-Show is wow. dying. Triple kill for Weeha. Oh, goodness gracious. That was beautiful. That should not have gone that way. The AoE control for T show the damage is there. Call down. I, I think it really comes down to that Darkseer didn't get a vacuum off before he died, and I don't think he got to use his mech either. Um, it's a big difference in these fights, right? The vacuum wall, if that wall had landed right through the middle of that fight, game over, man. DC would have no ability to control what's happening. Really well played. Uh, by DC to, to single out that target. It was a one-man Chronosphere, but it was the man they needed. <laughs> they got their man. Whoever it was that they needed to get, they took him out. Um, yeah, and, you know, for, for getting a one-man Chronosphere, for not using the black hole in that fight, uh, they just they, they went on the people they needed to and really, really well played. Um, despite the fact that they did just, you know, throw away a, a good amount of gold up in that top lane, you look at it now and they're back up on top again. 10k net worth lead in terms of experience and gold. They're they're in a great spot. And with the Desolator completed on Clinks as well and Aegis now up on Invoker, it does feel like they're going to start having their way a little bit with T-Show. Yeah, the problem with this Drum's Aquila build is that there's some armor on it, but... After the Desolator, he's only going to have like 12% physical damage resistance, which is I, ideally, in a perfect world, you want all of your heroes, especially your core heroes, to at least have the same physical damage resistance that they have magical damage resistance. That's 25 Ooh, base Tavo? Oh, nice, nice awareness right there in the bottom lane. It, you talk about it right there. He had, you know, the nine armor, it helps out a lot against that Desolator, and he almost ended up going down to the Sunstrike, but backed out at that last second. Meanwhile, over here on the side, they drop down the call down for Moo. They're going to turn it back around with the Chronosphere. Do they have actually enough damage? The Sunstrike's already been used, and only Misery is here as well as the Black Hole. It's going to come out. It doesn't actually catch Bardo, but Carlin might be enough for them to take this one. There's going to Sunstrike on the other side. They find the kill on Bane, and it looks like they are going to lose that Gyrocopter as well. So, it didn't look pretty for a moment, but they ended up making it work by the end. A resolution is a monster on this invoker. I cannot believe they didn't ban this out. <laughs> he has been just sun striking for days through both of these series, right? There's no, uh, <laughs> there's no way Tisha will make that mistake Ooh. again if they are forced to go into a game three, Ooh. which is looking Fuck. increasingly unlikely. Puck almost went down there, was able to escape at the last second, so he's good for the moment, but in the meantime, with still 15 seconds before Gyrocopter comes back up, they are pressuring this top tier 2 very heavily, and it looks like it's going to fall uncontested. Uh, still a lot of summon bowls. Well, Mu is up front and center. He is not going to die to this vacuum. On to four. No wall has been dropped in. Tavo just gets destroyed. They might think about running back in here. What is going on, though? They, they didn't have their carry with them. Yeah. Oh. That was uh, a weird time to decide to engage with those two. <laughs> to yeah. put it lightly. That was, uh, that was not the best. Yeah, Dota's a team game, guys. It's not a... It's not... Pairs tennis. You gotta, you gotta have five. <laughs> Especially when you drafted the five-man fight, right? They've got big AoE ults from a lot of their heroes, a lot of splash damage coming out from even the ones that don't. And now Oh see. my god, look at that damage coming out from Wii's. Just so strong and they're gonna jump forward, but the alacrity of Weeha is just doing too freaking much and is gonna be able to take this one on out as well. They throw out the Illustrator. up. Everybody's back there. That's actually gonna be a four-person catch in the vacuum wall and everybody's dropping really low. Sasuke's gonna go down. Rezo's gonna go down. That's four heroes. The Aegis already popped. Can they get another one here? I think that Rezo might be able to walk away, ghost walk Ooh. out, but no, there's the dust, and he is going to end up falling here in a second. There's going to be the Fiend script committed and already going to be a 3,400 gold swing, a little bit more off the back of that Rezo kill. A little too far forward, but they get Elena Rax. Yeah, 5,300 is not what oh you want to be giving away <laughs> right now, but I, they still have an 8,000 net worth lead after the net worth chart updates that, right? And they also got Elena Rax. It's not the worst trade that DC could have possibly made. And once again, I, I was talking about this last game, but a lot of teams get off to this sort of start, and then they're unable to really just force an objective's uh, engagement on the high ground. They taper off. DC are not wasting any time making sure that they at least take 
some objective advantage while they know they have the advantage. They're not going to tarry, they're not going to linger, and they're going to make sure that they get in and sow the seeds, right, for future mm. success. Yeah, absolutely. And they need to sort of do that off the back of, you know, continuing to take objectives when Roshan is back up again. Um, do you think that they can try and push before that happens? Or do they just try and sort of secure map control at this place, at, at this pace and put themselves in a position to take that later? I'm sorry. I, I didn't quite catch that. You broke up a little bit for me. Oh, no. I, I broke up. I'm sorry, man. Um, do, you, do you need to try and, like, make a move across the map and, and find uh, pickoffs at this point by taking over map control? Or do you think that they can try and push high ground before that happens again? Or maybe just clear out the tier twos? In terms of items, it looks like they're looking for a BKB on Invoker. It wouldn't be a terrible idea to, to wait for that Invoker to grab that. It shouldn't take very long, uh, two or three minutes. At that point in time, Roche will be close up, but they can knock down these tier two towers with probably very little contest. And uh, I, I don't really see the harm in seeing what they can get done here. Just kind of feeling out. You can actually tell. Like, right, no. who is up here on, on his own? His team is kind of waiting behind just in case there's an engagement. They're trying to, to force out an engagement from T-Show. That's stacked Over here, though, in their favor. They, they've caught Moo at least, and they end up being able to get the False Promise off. Black Hole is available, but Tasha Joel low. He gets it onto three, but he might not survive it with the BKB there. He's actually going to be able to live through it. He does end up dying there in the end, but already killing off three, and the doomed Moo is just chasing after the puck. Come at me. They've already killed off the Bane as well, and now on the other side can they finish off the puck he's running over the other direction my goodness my camera is losing all control of itself he popped the chronosphere just to finish off the puck because why not at this point five heroes dead but more importantly barracks soon to go down because weha is a monster and gg ends up getting called dc take game number two yeah, well played by DC. I, uh, there, that last fight where they staggered out and made sure that they weren't giving T-Show another engagement on a choke point with five heroes vulnerable, just goes to show once again their positional communication is just really stellar, especially considering they're a new team. I'm I'm really freaking impressed. DC and you know T-Show not necessarily the strongest of opponents ever they, they've been struggling recently trying to format their own roster as well but it does at least show in this instance that you've got a team that works well together there's been these pieces that I feel like um, it maybe wouldn't have been as clean if they weren't like a, a solid unit so I'm very excited to see what ends up happening throughout the rest of this um, any final thoughts before we take a break before our next series of the day Absolutely. It's going to be uh, Evernova facing off against Shazam. That's going to be taking place in just a little while. I will let you guys know out there when the next game is going to take place as soon as we end up going away for a second. But thank you all so much for tuning in. Give us a follow if you feel so inclined at Lyrical Dota, at the Wonder Cow. They're up there on the upper right-hand side of your screen. And for now at least, have a great one. 